independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The numbers are so far much better. We want to keep it that way. If you look at the original projections, uh, if we did nothing, it would be uh, disastrous. If we, we decided to do something, we closed it down, had no choice. It was a good move. That was a good move. The early China move was a good move. China. The early Europe move was a good move. Made a lot of good moves. But closing it down was a big statement. It was a big, important thing. But we're looking to have far fewer deaths than originally thought. That's good. Right. Models. So remember the models originally 2.2 million, 2.2 million. Then it dropped down to 500,000. Then it dropped down about a week ago, 240,000. Then it dropped down to between 100 and 200,000. Then on Monday it was 89,000. Now the latest estimates is 60,000. And that's by the end of August. So we would still have May well, all of April, right? We're early in day. So April, May, June, July, August. So five months. 60,000 deaths in five months as a total. That's modeling. And people say, well, the models are messed up. No, the models are only as good as the data. And the data changes every day because human beings are involved. The government's involved. We're changing our behavior. Therefore, the model changes. As we change our behavior, the model goes from point A to point B, point B to C. Sometimes it jumps all the way from C to X, and sometimes it can go back. We're changing our behavior, which is bringing down that mortality rate and bringing down the, the rate of, of how many hospital beds we're going to need, ventilators, things of that nature. That's what you want. It's a model. Trump is right. Numbers are better. They look better. I've said 30 to 50,000, somewhere in there. Over, you know, if we get out of this thing with 30 to 50,000 deaths, which sounds like a lot of deaths, but when you're taking it at what it could have been and where we're going to end up, it is nothing. Horrible for those people that are going through it. It is horrible for the people out there that are suffering from this or their family members are suffering from this. For the people that are paying the price financially, which is pretty much everybody. But what could have been? And where we're going, even though at times we were late to the game, the reality is it's a pretty positive outlook. And that model may continue to change. We may get to the point where two weeks from now, we'll have said we hit our peak back there in the place that we think it's going to be hit the hardest, which is New York, New Jersey, that upper northeast area. And now we're starting to see it come down. Look at California. Look at those numbers. Most populous state. It's really, they they were on it early and they've done a hell of a job. Washington State, they were the ones who suffered very early. They got into it early, and they shut it down quickly, and they've done well. Oregon, big time. Here in Arizona, where I'm at, they were expecting this thing to be, we're going to need X amount of beds, and now they're like, we're not quite sure if it's going to get to that point. That's a good thing. Doesn't mean we could let our foot off because we've, we've chosen this path, so let's stick it through. And everybody's you know, question is, when do we get out of this? But the reality is, the positive side of this is, the modeling is showing that because of our behavior and the way that we've acted, we're able to curb this thing, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Then the big question is, when again is something going to happen? When again are we going to see the economy take off? When again are things going to be rocking and rolling? When can people get back to work? When can people start doing things and planning for the future and trying to get back on their feet? When is that going to happen? 
I know it's been a frustrating 37 days, but it's only been 37 days, on the other hand. I know it feels like a lifetime. It's been so disruptive, uh, so abrupt. I know it's tough to get up every day, and this is like Groundhog Day, living through this bizarre reality that we're in. He's right. Bizarre reality. It's weird for a lot of people. People are suffering from cabin fever. You've heard a lot of that. Big time. Suicide hotlines, the number of people that are calling them is tremendous. People suffering in a lot of different ways. Anxiety just through the roof. Drinking, all kinds of, I mean, it, it's nuts. People are go, they're getting that cabin fever. Understandable. And for a lot of different reasons. Some people are genuinely scared that something's going to happen. That they're going to catch this. Everything they see, every interaction they have with anything. It could be a doorknob where they're walking out, or it could be they're going to the store and they're thinking to themselves as they pick something up, what could be on here that could kill me? And there's the other side of it, which is people are looking around going, this isn't going to be as bad as it is, and I have just put myself in a position where I could be potentially financially ruined. And I know the thought process, hey, it's going to go like quickly, and we're just going to snap our fingers and we're going to go back to normal. Nothing wrong with thinking that, with hoping that, but the reality, I think, is going to be something totally different. Certain parts of the economy you're going to see come back immediately. Certain things are going to take a little bit longer. I have every expectation that we will kill this virus soon, and when we do that, you're going to see a very big bounce back. As I've said, the economy has slowed down because we've closed down this economy, and when we reopen it, I expect that you're going to see a very strong rebound later this year. I do think we're going to see a rebound, but I think it's going to take some time, and it's a two-pronged situation, right? And I think Governor Cuomo hit on it really well. We have to start planning restarting life. We're not there yet, but this is not a light switch that we can just flick one day and everything goes back to normal. We're going to have to restart that economy. We're going to have to restart a lot of systems that we shut down abruptly, and we need to start to plan for that. And the planning is mightily important, and I'll tell you why. It's going to be in phases. The first phase is you're going to slowly but surely start to roll things out. You're going to start to give people more of an opportunity to get back out there. But you do it in such a way where, because once we start, we can't stop again. We can't do stop-start, right? We have to be ready to go and accept the consequences that come with whatever's going to happen. That means if if there's a reoccurrence of this thing and there's an outbreak, we can't stop down again. We we're we're not that's just not going to happen between the cabin fever and the financial difficulties companies and people are having it, once it starts. You have to let it go and accept those consequences. What will those be? Well, I think you slowly but surely allow certain businesses to reopen. With people being told, look, we've got maybe hopefully by then we have a treatment for it. So we get closer and closer to a vaccine And you tell people that while you're getting back out there, there are still people out there that are high risk and that you need to definitely still social distance and and isolate somewhat yourselves. And everybody else starts to get back out there and you're going to accept the fact that these things are going to happen and you're going to do it inch by inch. And then after that, you know, just like it happened, it's an inch. And then you double that to two inches. And then you double that to four inches. You start doubling it and allowing that to happen. But it's got to be gradual. And then once it really gets going, the psychological aspect is going to kick in, which is how many people out there are going to struggle getting back out there for a lot of reasons. First reason is they're scared. Is it going to happen again? Could it just out of nowhere just crop up again? And the next thing you know, you're sick. The second thing is people are going to be worried about their jobs. What if it comes again and all of a sudden we have to shut down again? I can't go through that. So people are going to, even if they start to get back out there and work, it's not like they're going to get back into the economy spending and doing things. But I do believe it will take off and it's going to take a while to get back into full run, just go, go, go like we were doing pre this. But it's going to happen. The good news is the models are changing because of human behavior, and we've done the things we're supposed to. took us a while. We should have been all in or all out early in the game, and we kind of weren't. Second thing is, we're America. We kick ass. 
This is what we do. We rebuild. We do it bigger. We do it better. We do it faster than everybody else. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's going to take a little bit of time, but we will come back from this. We'll be better prepared when something like this comes again, because there will be something like this. But at this point in time, the news is getting better every day. Yesterday was a tough day. It was our worst day. Today, I expect it act to be a little bit better. And then so on and so on. And other states starting to warm up. People are starting to, I think, feel good. And if this thing's seasonal, we might buy ourselves four or five months where we can not only work on a vaccine, but get a much better treatment. We've got to start looking at the positive because the negative is going to eat you up. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. You can take a uh, uh, tweet at us. You can take the poll. we got a poll up today, which is when life goes back to quote-unquote normal and we're out of the shelter in place, how long is it for you? To get back to what you consider to be your normal pre-COVID-19. Is it one to three months, three to six months, six months to a year? Who knows? Tweet at me, text me, tell me when you think that once this is kind of over with and you're back out there, when are you going to feel normal? How long is it going to take you to get back on your feet? Tweet at me, text me as well. As the poll results, we'll be talking about those in a little bit. But first, Lightstream. You're sitting around, you're trying to save money, you're doing things. Now you've got a chance to look at your credit cards and stuff that maybe you've not looked at for a while. And you're saying to yourself, you've been paying them off and you're really starting to realize that, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. I'm paying way too much on this. I'd like to have one low monthly payment, get some of this stuff paid off. That's where Lightstream comes in. Lightstream's credit card consolidation loans have rates from as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay, absolutely no fees. Dave, Florida, listens to the show, says, hey, I heard about Lightstream through a radio program. Ours. I'm so glad I had courage to reach out and try their service. Top-notch customer service, boom, and support. Very streamlined process, no issues or regrets. I'm happy to recommend the service to anyone. That can be you. On top of all of this stuff, easy to apply, no fees. You can even get your money as early as the same day. Apply now to get a special interest rate discount. And save even more. How? The only way to get this is go to lightstream.com slash Benson. L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-M dot com slash Benson. Subject to credit approval rate includes 0.50% uh, auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offer subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. Counting down the moment like the start of a new year. Chinese media documenting a dramatic midnight reopening of Wuhan. Officials rushing to push aside highway barriers. Traffic flowing once again. For 76 days, this city, with a population larger than New York City, was walled off from the rest of mainland China. Today, the original epicenter of the novel coronavirus, no longer on lockdown. Nope, no longer on lockdown, but the the streets look the same because everybody's leaving. A water cannon salute for the first commercial aircraft returning to Wuhan's airport. Inside the city train stations, crowds of people, passengers going through security and screenings. Only those with a clean bill of health allowed to leave. Iris Yu, stuck in her apartment for more than two months. As of Wednesday morning, she was on board a train, fully protected, headed to southern China. As for the Wuhan she's leaving behind? It is not uh, yet fully operational. Yeah, it's that. But he's getting out, right? He's leaving. Don't want to be in that situation. Because think about this. Think about how big China was. They shut it down. Authoritarian. They were able to do a lot of things that we're not able to do because we have this thing called a constitution and freedoms. And we have a government that allows our people to make certain choices. They suggest things. We have some stuff put in place through executive orders and things of that nature. But they were they were at the point where you couldn't even take your dog outside to go to the bathroom. You weren't allowed to go outside. They were drone they had drones. I mean, they were coming hard. We don't have that. We don't. But it, it's gonna it's very interesting. I don't look. We're never gonna know how much the Chinese knew, right? We're not. Did we find out something early in this 
that we should have known about and that the Chinese knew about much earlier than when they were saying? In late November, a very, very small, little-known intelligence agency inside the Defense Department, they actually reported that there was some sort of contagion that was so serious in November in China that was leading to a change of pattern of lifestyle and business. They were able to see a really, really critical problem that the Chinese did not have under control. Yeah, that's investigative reporter uh, Josh Margolin talking about what potentially was going on there and what it looked like and what was coming out of this thing. Think about that for a second. The warning was detailed and specific. It made it clear where it was. It made it clear that it was a health matter, an infectious disease kind of a thing. There is an ability for the intelligence experts and analysts to see these things. And it would have led to other intelligence agencies like the CIA, like the National Security Agency, to need to go out and get even more detail. Did they or didn't they? Did we know? Did we take it serious? Or did we think it was another SARS or MERS and that it wasn't as bad as it has become? Because I'm sure every single day, if you ask any, you know, infectious disease expert, they'll talk about all these things that are out there and they're monitoring them. And I'm sure there's some that they monitor a lot more. Did we just think, eh, it wasn't as bad? It's more like SARS or MERS where if it, you know, it could be bad, but it's not going to be that. It's more a pandemic, potentially. There's going to be a lot of questions, but those questions need to come later on. Not now. I see too much of that now. Too much games being played. Too much politicking. This isn't the time for politicking. This is the time to make sure that we do the things we're supposed to do, that our leaders do the things they're supposed to do, that they help the industries and the people who are suffering because through no fault of their own, they've had to shut down. And then later on when we emerge from this and we start to get our sea legs back, if you guys want to go and argue politics, knock yourself out. 323-538-2423. At Chad Menton Show is your Twitter Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Ellen's in trouble because apparently she's tone deaf in this world of comedy. Oh, my Lord. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Be positive. That's what we can do, right? We can get through this. Let's be positive. Stuff's still going on. Many of you still going to work. Getting a lot of texts to people are still going to work. Many of you working from home. Think about that. Think about 20 years ago. 30 years ago, if something like this hit. Technology wasn't there in the way that it is now. So less people would be working at all, how much longer it would take to get a vaccine and treatments. But because of technology, those things have advanced. And for many people, you're still able to work at home. You're still able to do some things. It's coming. That technology side is coming. And it's coming fast with the medical side. It's going to be able to help us get through this thing in a much quicker period of time than we normally would. We're also looking very carefully at rolling out and hopefully having soon within the next 10 or 14 days an antibody test so we can really tell how many Americans were asymptomatic and infected. And that's important. Fauci saying, you know, could be 50 percent of people that have this showed zero signs, had built up antibodies, but for a while they were carriers of this, that they did have it. Which, by the way, if you look at the modeling, we'd be at 700,000 if that was true. 
almost 800,000. And the deaths at 12, that l- makes that modeling look different. That, that you know, 2% drops down dramatically, the mortality side. And we don't even know. We'll never know. That's the other thing. Models will change because human beings are a part of it. And we are able to change. And because we're able to change, we're able to do the things that we need to do to mitigate some of this and change our behavior, whether we like it or not, it changes the models. So could there have been 800,000 people nationwide that are affected? Yeah, it could be 5 million people that have gotten this. And we'll find out later on down the line that it wasn't 50%. It was 95% of people were asymptomatic. We don't know. What we do know is we're trying to get a handle on it. And they said there's four things that you need to look for when it comes to reopening. Hospitals and states across the country must be able to safely treat patients requiring hospitalization without resorting to crisis standard of care. And that's for everybody. COVID-19 or not, which some hospitals, it's bizarre in some states what they're telling, hey, paramedics, uh, somebody's got chest pains and they're sick and and they potentially became, have a cardiac situation. You, you, you just can't do it. And you're just like, hold on a second. And you, that, that, you're saying what? Every day we lose 1,700 people to chronic heart disease, about 1,600 people to cancer. So that puts in perspective when you look at yesterday was our worst day and we were, what, near 750 in, in New York? So that's something to think about. The second thing is states need to be able to test at least everyone who has symptoms. A lot of states aren't testing the way they should be. And that's a federal problem, big time, as well as a state's problem. Third thing, states need to be able to conduct monitoring of confirmed cases and contacts. So you get it. You've got to isolate. We need to know who all the people you've come in contact with in the last X amount of days. And the last thing is there must be a sustained reduction in cases for at least 14 days. So a decline. So if we have a 1,000 cases in the state, the next day we have 900 cases, next day we have 800 cases, and 750 new cases are going away, uh, down, down, down. That's what they're looking for. And some states are on their way, and some states are going to have a a tougher time climbing out of this. It's not going to be tomorrow, but it will happen. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Feel free to tweet at us. Fauci, you know, he, 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 Dr. Fauci is in a, in a weird position. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy. And, you know, he's a data guy, right? It's, it's numbers. It's science. They're usually the empathy side isn't always there. And you have to, when you're in a position of a, something like this especially, and people are turning to you, you have to understand that you're delivering news to people, and while you're looking at data and science, most people aren't built that way. Most people, they, they, they need a comfortable shoulder. They want to know that things are going to get better. And sometimes just delivering something as it's a matter of fact, it's a tough thing. That by the time we get to the fall, we will have this under control enough that it certainly will not be the way it is now where people are shutting schools. My optimistic side tells me that we'll be able to renew to a certain extent, but it's going to be different. Remember now, because this is not going to disappear. By that time, we'll have a better feel with the antibody test about what the actual penetrance of this infection was in society. Yeah. Which is good. And he's I think he's learning because some days it's very much like everything's going to hell in a handbasket. And he's totally fine with that because it's numbers. And I don't think he's fine with it. It's just you've, there's certain ways you talk. Right. Whether you like Trump or not, there are certain things he, he does that you're like, OK, you know, shows his fighting ability, which we kind of like. He's a bit of a cowboy. We know that. To me, that that's interesting. And the way that he can resonate with a large group of people, you've got to be able to have that. You know, yesterday I was talking to somebody, I juxtaposed the position of, of what Obama would be like in this situation, Trump, right? Obama and Trump. Obama is, is, is pragmatic, right? And he would have been thoughtful. He would have showed empathy. He would have shut things down immediately across the boards for all states. 
He wouldn't have got the blowback that Trump got. But he would have he would have analyzed everything before he shut it down. But when he shut it down, it would have been a blanket shutdown. So it might have been longer before he shut down China and the travel there and that stuff. But once he did, it wouldn't have been, states, you guys are doing this. He would have just said, we're all doing this. And the media would have said, okay. And then what would have happened with somebody like Obama is he'd have come out and he would have given his speeches he would have listened to the science. They would have analyzed everything over and over. And some of the problems with the, the, a lot of blowback that he got as president, it was paralysis by analysis. The, the way that we're testing now, the way that we're throwing things against the wall to see what sticks, it was he, he would have, it would have been one of those situations where he would have overanalyzed everything in a lot of ways. And rather than sometimes you do need to go to get the exact opposite with this guy. Right. This guy's like, shut this down. Everybody, you guys do what your own. We're doing all these kind of things and we're trying here. And he's more Anthony Robbins. Right. One's more. And the other guy's Deepak Chopra or Gandhi. Right. Like it's, it's the way he delivers his his is thoughtful. And, you know, Trump's like, we're try everything. Everybody go to the pharmacy. Just take all the medicine you can. And then you get back to me in a week or so. And you tell me which one it worked. And we'll just go with that one. You're like, I took baby gummies. Like, all right, that sounds good. It's great. Could be a game changer. Flintstone vitamins could be a game changer. But we need a bit of both. We do. We need a bit of balance. Because you can't always analyze things till it gets to the point where you've got 25 different ways you've looked at it. And you decide, rather than catch any of the balls I've thrown in the air, I'll just let them all fall. And the other one, you just throw everything in the air at once. (laughs) And whichever one you catch, we're going to go with. Somewhere in the middle is good. I have been very hard on President Trump in the way that he's handled some of this stuff. And I think he's done a much better job. And at the same time, it gets frustrating. But every once in a while, we do need a little bit more analysis. And every once in a while, we do need a little bit more gut. I think Trump really wants to reopen the place and get people back to work because I think that's stuff he cares about. And I think he I think has a better understanding than some people out there in the political world that that it's not just about whether or not you're in a paycheck. There's a lot that goes with that. And I think Trump understands that. I think we'll come out of this thing in a different way than we would under Obama. Doesn't mean one's right or wrong. It's just a different way. Trump, everybody go to the pharmacy, just get whatever you can. So I'll take it. We'll all get back here tomorrow. We'll find out who doesn't feel good, and then we'll eliminate that. <laughs> Gummies, Flintstone vitamins look like they could be amazing. It's a game changer. Super game changer. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Ellen's in trouble, and she shouldn't be. I'm going to say this right now. Here's the thing about comics. And Jesselneck is the king of this. In tragedy, in times of chaos and darkness, most comics, they have a dark sense of humor. Even ones that are the shining lights of everybody's awe, they have some dark sense of humor. Because most comics have lived a life of darkness and tragedy, and they've used humor to overcome all that stuff. So they do find things weird. But we also live in a world now where you're going to get checked for everything you say. Even if it's just something kind of funny, haha, that should be just, hey, that joke was pretty just kind of vanilla. No, no, no. You're going to get checked. Ellen DeGeneres' daytime talk show has been off the air for most of the coronavirus shutdown, returning Monday from her living room. She thanked medical workers and those on the front lines, then made a joke that rubbed people the wrong way. This is like being in jail, is what it is. It's uh, mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days and everyone in here is gay. (laughs) The jokes that I have. On social media, Ellen was trending for the wrong reasons, slammed for being tone deaf, many pointing out that she was sitting in her comfy mansion while people in actual jails are getting coronavirus and dying. Oh, shut up. Get over yourself, for God's sakes. Were they put in jail because of the coronavirus? Were they put in jail... And it's it's horrible. We got to do a better job in the prisons. I mean, talk about a petri dish of stuff, right? 
But get over yourself. Comedy is, and especially with tragedy, time plus tragedy equals comedy. Comics will tell you that. They will. Jesselneck, if you've never seen him, is a guy who lives in the dark humor world. And it's a delivery that's very interesting. He even says now, I don't even have to look at the news anymore. I start to get text messages from people saying, dude, don't do it. (laughs) Then I know something happened. Comics will look for the dark side because it's a great way for them to use their comedy to ease their fears. But we've got to stop being so butthurt about everything. Well, she's inside of her mansion. I have news for you. If the coronavirus wasn't here and she was on break for a month, she'd still be inside her mansion. Just letting you know. And she worked hard for that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Wounded Paw Project. Been working with them for a while. They're amazing. You know, when he started this, Ernesto, he, he adopted a dog, Daisy. He was injured. He struggled with PTSD. He came home from his tours, and he adopted a dog. It says changed his life, and that's when he put Wounded Paw Project together. He realized that this animal can change his life. Imagine if they actually had dogs that they rescued and take them from shelter dogs to true service dogs, what it could do for veterans. But he also increased that to first responders from their family. And I'm telling you guys right now, the work that Wounded Paw Project is doing is great. And they're inundated right now because our first responders are really struggling. And just what a a real service dog can do and how it can brighten up and help people as they go through this is amazing. They need your help. You can take action day and turn your extra car, truck, RV, even a boat to a vehicle for change. You can donate. You can also donate cash. And you can even go to smile.amazon.com and set up your supporting group to Wounded Paw Project and help out in that way. Great tax-deductible gift. Proceeds will be used to protect, advocate, transform shelter dogs into service dogs for veterans, first responders, and their family. Check out all the work they do at WoundedPawProject.org. That's WoundedPawProject.org. Or call 844-678-4PAW, 844-678-4729, or WoundedPawProject.org. Chad Benson Show. Deal this. Mueller, arrest me. Chad will trade you two perjury charges for one collusion and throw in a reduced charge of obstruction for free. Yeah, I'd do that. For just listening to The Chad Benson Show. After months of hype, a new player has entered the streaming video game. Details after this. Quibi is a new streaming service. Here's the thing about Quibi. They're having issues. Not going to lie to you. They're having a little bit of issues. Download it the other day. Pretty much made for your phone. It's interesting. Ten minutes. That's what you get per episode. But having some issues. Not a lot. It launched this week with nearly 50 original shows. TechCrunch's Anthony Haas says there's some big names attached as well. There's Chrissy's Court, which is Chrissy Teigen uh, presiding over Small Claims Court. There's a new version of Punked with Chance the Rapper. All episodes are less than 10 minutes long. That means Quibi competes with companies like Netflix, but also free platforms like YouTube. The Quibi shows are more, you know, they've clearly spent more money on them than your average YouTube video. But is it better enough that I am going to pay $5 a month or $8 a month? It's also launching as many people are staying home due to the coronavirus outbreak. But Haas says that's a double-edged sword. The question is, does that does that, that kind of mobile, quick mobile viewing experience feel essential now when I could just sit at home and binge something for hours? Yeah. Well, you can get through things fast. Like, they've got the 50 states of horror, which looks really good. Sam Raimi's attached to it. And they've got a bunch of directors that are famous in the horror genre and up-and-coming directors that direct these little episodes. That looks neat, but is there enough of it? that you're going to spend that kind of money. It's $4.99 or $5.99, and right now you get 90 days free if you download the app. And then you can pay $7.99 and not see any commercials. Otherwise, it's a pre-roll, and there's no commercials in it. It's just a pre-roll, like something like 30 seconds, and then you get to watch the episode of something. Interesting. 
And I think in our short attention span world, that's very interesting. And they have huge names attached to a lot of this stuff. I wonder what they're getting to do that. Because, you know, you think, okay, if you say this, are you doing it for the director? Are you doing it for production companies? Does Quibi own its own? Do you ask for stock? Because the whole game is stock, isn't it? That's why I want some stock in this company if it's going to go somewhere. It's got Jeffrey Katzenberg and a lot of other people behind it. Meg Whitman, who was a presidential candidate, a governor candidate at one point in time, and she is uh, she should run IBM. So it's got some big people behind it, and it's perfect time to launch. But seven ninety nine, I get Netflix and I get all the shows I want. Hulu, I already have too much stuff. But for 90 days, I'll try it and see what it's like. But when I first looked at it the other day, I'm like, not everything's on there that I see all the trailers for. If you're going to launch, launch with everything, right? Because if there's only 50 things on there and everything's only 10 minutes long, that's like two days if I'm at home and I'm interested in all of them. And then I've gone through your catalog. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. The program. When is life going to be normal for you after we get out of this? Is it going to take you a few months to feel comfortable again? Is it going to take you a year? Tweet at me. Text me. I want to hear. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The numbers are so far much better. We want to keep it that way. If you look at the original projections, uh, if we did nothing, it would be uh, disastrous. If we we decided to do something, we closed it down. Had no choice. It was a good move. That was a good move. The early China move was a good move. China. The early Europe move was a good move. Made a lot of good moves. But closing it down was a big statement. It was a big important thing but we're looking to have far fewer deaths than originally thought china far fewer deaths why because the models are saying so well the models have been wrong the models are based on certain things and because human beings are evolved so we're all involved we're human beings and we can alter our behavior in doing so we can change the course of this that's what we've done. There were two paths we could have taken. We could have said we're going to try for herd immunity, do what Sweden's doing. We'll find out what that looks like. Or we can start to lock things down, get a handle on it as best that we can, and continue to search for not only a vaccine, but treatments separate from each other physically not social distancing i don't like that it's physical distancing because you can still talk to people that's silly and we'll see where we go and that's what we've done some states have done it more than other states At the end of the day are we getting a handle on it i think so models originally horrific we were going to lose potentially 2.2 million even half that would have been like whoa then it was cut down to like 500,000. Started to alter our behavior. Then it was cut down to 240,000. Then it was cut down to somewhere between 100 and 200,000. Then it was cut down to 89,000. And now they're looking at 60,000. I say somewhere between 30 and 40, maybe 50,000. And this is over a period of time through August. So you got all of April left. May, June, July, and then August. Five months. Is that possible? Yeah. Could it get down to the point where we lose twenty five or thirty thousand? Also possible. Models will change. You use models to try to figure things out on what you're going to need. Also, 
use models as you look at these things and the data to find out who is really potentially going to struggle with this. One of the things they're looking at is the African-American community. What's going on there? How's that struggle been? It's been big. It has been. Also with people over the age of 65. People with underlying health conditions. So you use these models to try to gauge and, and figure out exactly what the mortality rate is. Try to do the best you can with the infection rate. What does it look like? How fast does it spread? But because humans can alter this, because we are humans and we have choice and we do certain things, we can change the course for for better or worse. And so far, it looks like we're doing for better. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. States are doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, which is helping. In the past 24 hours, new COVID-19 cases here in California have risen under 11 percent. ICU cases up just 2 percent. Governor Gavin Newsom says those lower numbers are encouraging. He says social distancing is working and the curve is flattening. It is bending, but it's also stretchy. He says modeling shows the cases will keep rising slower than before, but for a while. And a California's peak won't come for a few more weeks. And what is that going to look like? Because the peak is one of those things where we're finding it here in Arizona. Our peak was supposed to be April 26th. Now they've pushed it out to May being a tougher month. And I'm like, well, hold on a second. You guys are pushing it out, yet we're looking at the numbers, and the numbers aren't jiving with what you're saying. And part of that, that's good. We've got to have anticipation, but I'm also looking to see what states are putting themselves in positions where they're sending healthcare professionals to places like New York and New Jersey to help, where they're sending ventilators to other places because they overestimated what they needed and they were able to kind of, you know, put a uh, put the foot down on the brake and slow it down. And so now they've got a little bit of a surplus and they can send it to other places that may be in need. California, Washington State doing well. New York still struggling. Yesterday was one of those days where it was ugly. The death rate was high. We won't know until probably late, late tonight or early tomorrow what today looks like. Some people are saying it's either today or yesterday that will be the peak of their deaths. And then it'll start to slowly but surely uh, come down. Models, they matter. Data matters. Especially when you're finding out, okay, who's got what, right? You know, how old are you? You're 67. You've got diabetes and obesity. What are we finding out about this thing? Underlying health conditions, not good. By the way, underlying health conditions, even if you catch a flu, not good. With this, really, really bad. With the flu, potentially to be really, really bad. It's amazing. It is. It's amazing to see. uh, This is really an eye-opener for for a lot of people. It really is, I think, that like, wow, how out of shape are we? Obesity is playing a huge role in this. Diabetes is also one of the things they're looking at because it seems to be that 85% of the people that are dying or have been hospitalized in New York are obese and either have COPD and most of them have diabetes. That's that's an eye opener right there. It is. You're like, wow. So what does that say? Health matters in a lot of ways, and there's things we can do to avoid some. Some. My grandmother was thin as a rail her entire life. She had juvenile diabetes. There's nothing you can do about that. But there's a lot of things that we can do to better ourselves. And we should all be looking at this in a way to go, maybe it's time to really get serious about health. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at us. You can text the program as well. China opened up Wuhan yesterday. I don't know how that's going to go. I I don't. We'll never know what 
went on at Wuhan. Sounds like a song. We'll never know when what went wrong at Wuhan. We'll just we're never going to know that. What we do know is people are running for their lives, getting the hell out of there as fast as possible. That I understand. I don't know what Wuhan looks like in six weeks or six months. City bigger than New York. Could there be nobody there? It's a lot of what we've talked about. What does our world look like in, say, eight weeks, eight months? How open are we? Germany is really moving its way back in to opening up, but they're doing it in in just dribs and drabs, a little bit here, a little bit there, right? Which is what I think we have to do. Just just a smidge here and a smidge there. But someplace like Wuhan, because they only they know the truth of how bad this thing really was. But are they worried? And 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 Let's be honest. I mean, how are they checking you when you're leaving Wuhan? Because they're saying, well, they're checking people to see if they're sick. Well, how will you know if they're sick? If X amount of people are asymptomatic, they're not going to show any fever. Have you tested everyone there? There's 13 million plus people there. Have you tested everyone? And then they're going to head on out. And what does that look like for the rest of, of China? Because China was able to lock that thing down quick. They locked it down quick. You could do that when you have no freedoms. And if you noticed, there wasn't a lot of stuff outside of, outside of Wuhan that was really affected in China. So what happens and how are those people going to be treated when they're coming from other places? Do you lie and say, I'm not from Wuhan, from another place? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. We asked a question. Get a lot of interesting answers, people texting in about when they feel their life will go back to normal after we leave this situation here. One to three months, 47% say it'll take about one to three months for them to feel normal again after shelter in place is done. Three to six months has about 18%. Six months to a year, 10%. And who knows? Is 23%. One to three months, I think for a lot of people, it's it'll probably be about two to three months on average. For most people, but there are going to be some people out there that it's going to take them a while. And it's good. There's a psychological side of this that is that's going to be very real, you know, testing things. You know, can you get past the not washing your hands every 30 seconds uh, that every time you open up a doorknob, right? But, you know, open up a door and you go to turn the knob, you're like, oh, it's you know, there's that that and the fear of what if this thing pops up again and, and we all have to shelter in place. I don't want to take that chance again. And so even if you're going out doing your things, you may not be spending money like you used to. You may be, you know, digging yourself out of a hole and then saving, 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 which will slow the economy down as well. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson. Show is your Twitter. Let me tell you something. Car Shield is here to help. Plans starting as low as $99 a month. Call 800-CAR-6000. Mention code Benson. When you do, you save 10% right there. And you tell them what you got. Maybe your car's a little bit newer. You you worry about the electronic side of things. You're like, I, I need, what if something goes out? Those things are expensive. You're like, cool, right? They got a plan for that. Maybe your car's a little bit older. And you just want to make sure your transmission and your day-to-day operation, your engine and everything is taken care of. They got a plan for that. You get 24-7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. And the shop is the shop that you choose. They get them paid directly. You pay a small deductible. It's that simple. For as low as $99 a month, protect yourself from surprises. Save thousands on cover repairs. Call 800-CAR-6000. Mention code Benson. Save you 10% or visit carshield.com. Carshield.com. Use that code Benson to save 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, liftoff. 
now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Well, oh, well, let's take a look there, shall we? <laughs> People ask me all the time, how are you so positive in negative times? Choice is happiness, kids. You being miserable inside your house isn't going to fix any of this. So you can either do two things. You can go, you know what? I choose to be happy today. I'm going to try to distance myself socially from all of the negativity. Try to make my day as good as possible and realize that I'm living at the greatest time in human history. And we're going to get through this or you can suck and be Debbie Downer or Donnie Downer. Whichever you choose. Just letting you guys know. Dick Sporting Goods starting to furlough employees as of April 12th. They're trending. Passover starts tonight. That is also trending. John Prine, or Preen, probably said it wrong. Passed away yesterday. Age 73. Trending still. Everybody's like, oh, and I'm like, I gotta be honest, I don't. No, no, no. I mean, I know some of his music, but it wasn't like I followed him. And I wonder, is it because of the coronavirus that it got like it became this big thing? You know, it sounds stupid to say, but you, you ask the question because you watch television all day. You know, for me, I have to keep up with all this stuff and, and I'll flip around and look and I'm like, you know, if if he would have died, like if some of these people would have died from something else, just natural causes. Would there have been this because of the coronavirus? Like CNN, like nonstop, like the survivors or or the victims. I'm like, really? Like 1,700 people are going to die today because of what? Chronic heart disease. 1,600 people are going to die today because of cancer. And you're not putting that up. They're there to scare you. Think about that. Some other things that are out there. President Newsom, because everybody thinks Gavin Newsom's doing a great job. Just don't trust him with your wife. What? If you haven't heard, just Google it. Some other things that are trending. Pandemic in five words. Credulous dollar. Crefellow dollar is a preacher, and apparently there was a uh, (laughs) spell check. And instead of saying Crefellow dollar... It said credulous dollar. And then everybody are going after the pastors who have a lot of money. And what they've done or not done. It's easy to do that. Like my church has done a ton of stuff, continues to do a ton of stuff for everybody. Like they said this weekend, every everything on the Easter, they're going to have several services for, you know, Good Friday and, and everything. And the, everything is going to go to help everybody inside of the community you know, and and who's struggling, whether they go to the church or not, paying their bills, little things like that. You never hear that. It was about a month ago, we did a story that a church, a big church, paid off like $50 million in medical debt. And it was a blurb. It's like, because it's easy to pick from the negative. And that's part of what we do, right? It's so much easier to be negative than positive, but it is a choice. Right, this, you could be toxic, or you can say, "Screw it!" You know what? I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna bounce around. Right? Let's be honest. If you had to hang out with Winnie the Pooh and all his friends, you're. It, it may be annoying after a while, but I'd rather hang out with Tigger than Eeyore. Because after a while, you're like, "Dude, Eeyore sucks." I mean, I know somebody's nailed something into his butt, but he's remember that? That's his tail. Looks like somebody nailed some. But he's just he's just Debbie Downer, right? Or you could be Tigger. Tigger's bouncing around happy as can be. Those are choices. By the way, Winnie the Pooh is a study in psychology. For those of you not keeping score. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. That by the time we get to the fall, we will have this under control enough that it certainly will not be the way it is now where people are shutting schools. My optimistic side tells me that we'll be able to renew to a certain extent, but it's going to be different. Remember now, because this is not going to disappear. By that time, we'll have a better feel with the antibody test about what the actual penetrance of this infection was in society. Yeah, and the antibody test is going to be interesting. They're looking at about two weeks before we start to have that in mass. Uh, that's going to be because we'll we'll start to get real kind of numbers. So how like if we could start really testing a bunch of people that show zero symptoms and we find out that hey, we tested a hundred and out of a hundred. You know, small sample size. I'm just throwing that. This is numbers, right? Just simple. As, make it easy. Just <laughs> easy as you can, Chad. We test 100, and out of those 100, 25 of them tested positive for COVID-19, the coronavirus, the Wuhan flu. <laughs> Sounds devilish, Chad. Out of that, we've shown that there's a lot of asymptomatic people that have antibodies built up and that may test positive, and that we don't even know about, that could be spreaders. You also may have people inside of that that have antibodies already built up that match those of people who have or have had COVID-19 and survived it, and that they won't get it at all. So we need that. That's a good thing. But the new normal thing, that's what I hear, is it going to be the new normal? It's not going to be the new normal. It's not. We're going to get through this. I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I'm going to continue to say it. I'm going to beat that drum. We're going to get through it. We're going to survive. We're going to thrive on the other end. It may take us a little time to ramp up, but it's going to happen. I worry at times about the government, the role in this, and I mean the role in the way that they're going about doing certain things, because uh, some of it is a little scary. It is. After the financial crisis, new normal, uh, this paradigm shift that really changed a lot of things that were assumed and, you know, the metal didn't flex back to the shape that it was in before. And a lot of things really changed. And we saw that with regulation. And I think with the coronavirus crisis, you know, we're seeing a public health crisis at the same time as deep economic damage. The point there being that this has the potential to really change a lot of individuals' behavior, companies' behavior, government's behavior in a huge way. Yeah. And I worry about the government overstepping. I've said that over and over. And I get so many people that push back. Well, the government should be doing this and the government should be doing that. And we should be doing this. And I said, here's the beauty of our country. We have freedoms. We do. But we also have responsibilities with those. And at times there's a fine line of people who want to exercise way more freedom because they want to show, look, we've got freedom and I will do that. But you have personal responsibility that you should also think about the lives of others. You can protect freedoms and be responsible, right? It's not a it's not an either or thing. Too many people I think make it either or either. No, it's not. It's not an either or thing. You can protect freedoms. You can exercise your freedoms, and at the same time, you can be responsible. I do worry. What's the new world going to look like after this? And how much stuff that they're doing now are they going to continue to keep there and say, well, we've grabbed a little bit more. What else? You know, it's no big deal. Right. But it's not just that. We talk about the psychology of it all away from that. How are individuals themselves going to act? This is Ethan Wolfman. He's a millennial, but I think he's he, he's right here. Here's an example that I think is interesting. After many recessions, kind of in the past, looking at the personal savings rate, that really jumps every time something bad like this happens. You know, going forward, people might really want to beef up their emergency funds, to spend a lot less. This is happening as credit card interest rates are really high as well. That would you know, depress spending. Yeah, totally would depress spending. And that worries some people. Because as we talk about the the economy i think cuomo said it best uh this is not a light switch that we can just flick one day and everything goes back to normal 
We're going to have to restart that economy. We're going to have to restart a lot of systems that we shut down abruptly. And restarting something doesn't mean it's going to go right back to where it was pre the incident. And this incident is much bigger. 2008, this is way bigger than 2008. 2008 was a manufactured giant cluster hump. It was. It was a perfect storm of greed on all sides, people running amok, people thinking, oh, this is never going to end, and it blew up in all of our faces. This is much bigger, and it has nothing to do. Nobody's done anything wrong. I see it when they go after the airline industry. You know, they they spent $45 billion in stock buybacks. Yeah. And their business model was fine at that point in time. If they would have been in a situation where everybody else is doing fine and they got themselves in trouble, we don't bail them out. If we tell them they can't operate, that's a different story. This wasn't something that somebody did or an industry did or a sector of the economy did. This was none of that. This is something that came out of nowhere and became much bigger, and it has affected every basic... I mean, I, last night, the perfect example of how far this thing has reached. There is a ship that people take to go to the Antarctic like a cruise ship. I think there's 200 people on board and 128 have tested positive for the coronavirus. Like, that is insane. That is, that's insane. So there's going to be a psyche to this. While the economy may open up, your pocketbooks may not. I mean, if you just think about the psyche and mindset changes for people who kind of came of age in crises, graduated into the Great Recession, and a lot of other millennials, this really affected, I think, how some of our worldview is shaped and kind of our shape of economies. At the same time, you have people who are a little bit younger, have only seen nothing but a, a bull market. And this is a big shock. Uh, and I think of, you know, people who maybe came of age during World War II, they never lost that ration mentality. So I think that there could be some really, really deep psychological and behavioral changes and i think that's something that's going to play out people coming back out there some of them are going to be struggling financially a good a good portion of people are going to be struggling financially they may not be bankrupt but it's going to take a while to dig out of the hole there's going to be some that are just ruined financially and then there's going to be people out there whose lives outside of the shelter in place didn't change too much maybe they got cabin fever But they've got a lot of anxiety about what comes next. And instead of going out and spending, they're going to save. And they're going to be much more cautious in their approach. And when that happens, what happens with the economy? The consumer index is going to stay kind of meh. People aren't going to be out spending like they used to for lack of funds. Or even though they may have funds just because they're worried about what comes next. And it's going to take a while For the train to get moving again. But it will move. And it will go forward. It's just not happening the minute we really open it up. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. I love hearing from every single one of you. I've got a question for you. Put it on the old Twitter about this subject of when. When will you? feel like your life is back to normal once we're through this one to three months has 48 percent three to six months has 18 percent six months has 10 percent 24 percent for who knows i don't think so i don't some people think they know i think there are some people out there who genuinely think the minute it goes out there i'm going right back to normal and they're going to get out there and say you know what maybe not So, and some people may think, uh, I'm going to start saving everything and they're going to get back out there and you know what? Oh, no, I can afford this. No, I can do this. Maybe I can do. So we'll see. But there is a psyche to all of this. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Love hearing from you. 
uh, do Major League Baseball. Will they play? Won't they play? I think that's another sign of when things start to return to normal is when we can start to see the emergence of, of, of movies and sports get back into our lives and our culture. I think that will be a huge breath of fresh air, fresh air for, for everybody. And as a baseball player, I applaud that effort um, uh, in, in a way that uh, you're trying to figure out how can you get baseball back? How can you get it back? Uh, how, can, how can you create that sort of magical feeling again? How can we get back to some um, look of normalcy? And maybe um, um, if baseball can figure it out, uh, they'll provide some hope for uh, for many other people. I know baseball has served um, the public really well in some tough times. Uh, uh, we saw how magical it was uh, after 9-11 and uh, the role that Major, uh, Major League Baseball played. Baseball is America's game, and uh, in, in many ways it allows us to cope and uh, maybe even go back to our childhood and, and have good feelings. So, you know, I don't know how it's going to be a complicated process, how they're going to figure it out, but I, I love the fact that they're trying to figure it out. Yeah, it's Cal Ripken there talking about it, and I, I think he's right. And I think that's a, you know, I watched this past week, and my little brother is, is, is here visiting, and, you know, he's 15, and, and he loves wrestling, and it was weird to watch. There was no fans, and it was, it just it, it it was eerie. And that may be the thing that happens at first, but it's a sign that some things are coming, and it's going to be normal. And I think that's what people are looking for. People are looking for hope. You can't give them an exact answer, but you can give them a roundabout and some hope. You can talk about where we're going, not just where we're at. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show. That's your Twitter, AMAC Association Mature American Citizens. So you're over the age of fifty, and you're saying to yourself, "I want somebody who has my beliefs and believes in the Constitution and wants common sense reforms on real things like immigration and Medicare and Social Security reform." AMAC is for you. Right now, you get a one year membership. It's absolutely free. It's on me, kids. It's on me. It is. It's simple and easy to join. You go to amac.us forward slash Chad. You're going to receive your first year free. They have great benefits as well. All kinds of benefits. You're going to be able to take advantage of travel, retail, restaurants as soon as everything opens up. And on top of that, let's say you have questions about Medicare and Social Security. Guess what? They will help you with those questions. They'll help you get everything set up, whatever it is that you need. And it's free. Did I mention that? That can cost you a penny. A-M-A-C dot U-S forward slash chat. There is no cost. There's no tricks. There's no credit card required. It's a free one-year membership. Sign up today. AMAC dot U-S forward slash chat or call 888-355-1668. Chad Benson Show. Get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. It's one last visit with the family. ABC's Modern Family saying farewell after 11 seasons on the air and a record tying five Best Comedy Emmys. Star Nolan Gould's been playing Luke Dumphy since he was 10, and he recently told me what he'll take with him from this 11 year experience. The cast crew will forever be part of my lives, and the experiences and the memories, um, obviously, you know. Uh, Thank gosh, I've been saving some of the money. And- Tonight's finale is one hour long, and just before it, there's an hour-long Modern Farewell special. Yeah. I watched that show the first season or two, and I'm like, I really like this show. And then, like I do with everything else that I watch show-wise, is I never watch it again. Like, got really into House. I watched the first four years. I don't even know how it ended. <laughs> I know the Wilson guy died, but outside of that, I, I don't know how it ended. I just... Don't. I just what I do. But this was an interesting thing. And think about it. You started when you're 10 years old on the show. So you're 21 now. You started, you really had nothing to your name as far as credits. You've got this. You're now worth several million dollars. This will go into syndication and now being sold to Netflix and Hulu and all of those things. The money that you're going to make off that, that's a good run right there. That's a good, good run. You'd be surprised at what some of those people make. I know that, like, Friends is and, and is 
not the greatest example because they're always a one-off. They make about $20 million a year off, off all their stuff each, so that's good. But I had a couple friends who were in major series. One has since passed away, but he was making eight hundred grand a year off his residuals, something like that. Just doing nothing, just waking up. It's a good deal. Got to make sure you get that syndication money. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Speaking of money, NBA players are struggling. They are. You had to put a percentage mark on how many players in the league live paycheck by paycheck. What would you say that is, CJ? There's some guys in the league that are hurting right now because they're obviously the work stoppage is in place, but there could be a pay stoppage. I think a lot of guys are, are going to be hurting, especially so people that didn't just budget correctly, they didn't expect this to happen. Maybe they loaned money or, or gave money to family. Maybe they're taking care of multiple people. And now it's a work stoppage for us and for a lot of people in America. So I would say out of 450 players, 150 probably living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, C.J. McCollin plays for the Blazers. His salary's pretty good. I think he's still okay. He's $25 million. But there are a lot of players out there. You think about this, right? You hear, oh, my God, they, they need to budget better, and that's one of the big issues why they all go broke after a while because they don't budget at all, and they need to. But you let's so, so let's say you get a million dollars a year, all right? And you live in a place like California – well, 38% is going to go to the feds. 10% is going to go to your agent and manager, right? Because you're going to have a few of those. You're going to pay, what, 14% in California in state tax. By the time you look up, you're down to three, dollars $400,000. And in California, that's, you're like, oh, my God. And... So many of them come from situations where they want to help out people from where they're from. They want to help out their family. They've never been in a situation where they've got money like this and they think it's never ending. So, like, all sports leagues now are trying to get rookies to understand, hey, you're going to be handed a check for X amount of dollars. Now it's direct deposit. Right? So... You're going to go, you're going to sign a contract on a Saturday. Monday morning, you're going to wake up and you're going to go and you're going to see there's a signing bonus of X amount of millions of dollars. That's what you're living off of. You better budget wisely. And many of them didn't. And you got 19-year-olds who are running around with 50 grand in their pocket and they're spending it like it's going out of style because they think that the ATM machine is never going to go anywhere. And that's why they're trying to help these young guys who have all this money realize... You can live a great lifestyle. You can even help out. But don't be foolish. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. You can text the program as well. When do you feel life for you is going to go back to normal after all this? Is it going to take a few months? Is it going to take a year? Let me know. Tweet at me. Text the show. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts independent life this is chad benson the numbers are so far much better we want to keep it that way if you look at the original projections uh, if we did nothing it would be uh, disastrous if we we decided to do something we closed it down had no choice it was a good move that was a good move the early china move was a good move the early europe move was a good move made a lot of good moves but closing it down was a big statement it was a big important thing but we're looking to have far fewer deaths than originally thought it's a good move i don't think the move's gonna be any better it's good surprised he doesn't do the heisman up there pretty good move as well numbers are better modeling's changing what's that mean well we've altered our behavior because of that the numbers will look different than what they would have looked like if we had done nothing 
our behavior is different because we are sheltering in place. Most states have some sort of shelter in place order. Some majority of the states have pretty strict orders about who's essential and who's not essential. Some states a little bit lax, but they haven't been hit as hard. They're a little bit more rural. They build out, not up. So it's totally different. Totally different. But it does look better. Now the question about the economy, when are we going to get back to normal? That's going to take a while. Let's get through this situation over the next two weeks or so and then reevaluate as we head towards the end of the month. We're going to have to have the talk, though. Not that talk. The talk. And the talk of when we open up the economy, we have to know that there will be a spike in certain areas again and that we are going to have to accept that. Because we can't play, I'm in, I'm out, we're shut down, we're not shut down, we're open, we didn't open. We're going to have to accept the fact that once we reopen it, there's no going back. When you fly an airplane, pilots will tell you that you get to a certain area inside of the flight where you have to carry on forward. There's no going back to the airport from whence you came. And that's kind of going to be this, that once we open the doors and we get out there, that not only would it crush us mentally, it would, I think, devastate us for years to come financially if we reopened and then shut down again i just don't think i i don't i don't think americans would would stand for it i think at some point in time they're going to go we're going to challenge this because we just can't do this we've given you x amount of days and there's only so much you're going to be able to do so what does that look like i think by the end of the year we'll have some normal way of life and by some i mean 90 percent. there will still be certain sectors and certain parts of the economy that as far and i'm not talking about spending and the economy roaring i'm just talking about the day-to-day functions of concerts and sporting events and things like that there will still be some things in place that for social distancing and just you know as a safety precaution it may take us another six months beyond that or a year even to get back to where the economy's roaring, but it will happen. But I think once we open it, we have no choice but to, this is what we're doing. Because we can't say, all right, August 1st, you know, we're going to slowly roll out in June in some areas, more in July, and by August 1st, we're up and running, and then you go September 1st, oh, it's back, we got to shut down. People are going to be like, nope, sorry, not doing it. Certain parts of the economy you're going to see come back immediately. Certain things are going to take a little bit longer. I have every expectation that we will kill this virus soon. And when we do that, you're going to see a very big bounce back. As I've said, the economy has slowed down because we've closed down this economy. And when we reopen it, I expect that you're going to see a very strong rebound later this year. Steve Mnuchin, I don't really buy that it's going to be a massive rebound. I think it's going to take time to get back to that place because there's a psychological side of this. But we'll get we'll get there. We're going to get there. But it is going to take a little bit more time. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's a very interesting article about what doctors are saying about ventilators. And doctors are now saying, you know what? This ventilator thing may be overblown because what we're doing doesn't seem to be working in the way that it should be. And they're saying that the majority of people who end up on a ventilator don't recover from this. And that's that's big, right? And it's not just us. It's China. It's everywhere else where they've had ventilators. There have been real issues with people coming out of this. So what they're saying is they're trying some new things, and that's the beauty of what we've got here. And Dr. Paul Merrick uh, said, look, what we're, wor- what we're working with now, what we're doing, it- it's, it's not working. So we got to look somewhere else. And he's saying what some other people have been saying is, especially for a younger generation, it's inflammation. And that we need to rethink how we treat it. That the lungs and everything are so inflamed because the immune system is 
overdoing it. And so that maybe we need to look at anti-inflammatories early on once the patient is admitted to the emergency room. So that'll slow down the swell so you never get to the point, like a prevent defense, before you get to the point where you need it. Because at that point in time, then you're chasing. And that, that that's that's one of the things I've been talking about, this thing, for the young, when you see patients who are young and who have no pre-existing condition that are struggling, it's because they're saying the inflammation side of it, your immune system is overactive. It is fighting itself, and it's causing your lung to essentially be inflamed, which is then causing the problems. And if you can stop that, and what he's doing is intravenous vitamin C, hydrocortisone, thamine, which is a treatment for septus, is kind of his own little cocktail, and he's been using it for three or four years. So that's a very interesting way to look at it. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. You can text the program as well. All of that being said, they've released people from the Wuhan. Counting down the moment like the start of a new year, Chinese media documenting a dramatic midnight reopening of Wuhan. Officials rushing to push aside highway barriers, traffic flowing once again. For 76 days, this city, with a population larger than New York City, was walled off from the rest of mainland China. Today, the original epicenter of the novel coronavirus, no longer on lockdown. No longer on lockdown. So what does that mean? Run away! Run away! A water cannon salute for the first commercial aircraft returning to Wuhan's airport. Inside the city train stations, crowds of people, passengers going through security and screenings. Only those with a clean bill of health allowed to leave. Iris Yu, stuck in her apartment for more than two months. As of Wednesday morning, she was on board a train, fully protected, headed to southern China. As for the Wuhan she's leaving behind? It is not uh, yet fully operational that it indeed is recovering run away run away the first thing people are doing in Wuhan they're leaving get out of here people are going why are you going that direction that's Wuhan don't go that go the other way where do you go do people treat you different too, because they knew you like, oh, don't tell anybody you're from Wuhan, because they're saying a little weird, because, you know, you, like, ruin the world. <laughs> you guys over at the Wuhan. I like how they said the Wuhan. I, uh, 70-some days they were locked up. And they were. I mean, they, they like, France has said you can't go outside and exercise now. You're hearing stories of, you know, people over here saying, like, I was just going for a walk. I was going for a jog and the cops are coming up to me. And it just you're hearing those. But they were on real lockdown. Like, we're going to put a fence around the city. We're going to have drones. And, uh, yeah, don't go outside. And, well, if my dog has to go to the bathroom, well, he's going to crap in your house. And you're just going to have to deal with it. Like, okay. That's, that's, that was real. And when you have no constitution that really matters, you can get away with stuff like that. We don't. That's why people are having troubles with cabin fever, right? Even uh, Cuomo talked about that. It's even more difficult, I think, with the weather changing and you feel the seasons changing and it's getting nicer and you start to open a new book of possibilities and now the weather's getting nice and I should be getting outdoors and I should be doing this and I should be doing this. I get it. But it's only been 37 days. Well, that's, again, you're out and about doing stuff. For some people, it feels like it's an eternity, especially because we have the attention span of a gnat in this country. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. My Pillows, Mike Lindell says, you know what? We're not going to be building any My Pillows for a while. We're going to help out and do our part here. And we're going to change our production line and switch it over to start making uh, protective equipment for everybody, masks and whatnot they can do for hospitals. And he needs to get rid of a lot of stuff that he has. And right now, he's giving you a BOGO. Buy one, get one free. What does that mean? Supreme my pillows, you buy one, you get one free. Giza towels and dream sheets, you buy one, you get one free. My pillow towels, you buy one, you get one. You see where we're going with this? Yeah. 
everything. You get a 60-day money-back guarantee, a 10-year warranty, and here's the beauty of it, made in the U.S. of A. Plus, when you go to MyPillow.com, there's a radio listener special. Use the promo code Benson when you check out. If you purchase his book, he's going to ship everything for free and give you a $25 gift card towards your next purchase. Go to MyPillow.com. Buy one, get one free on everything. MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Benson. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. need to fear. We promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry Russia, Russia, Russia. Who is the fearless leader? Pui. Pui, pui, and double pui. Boy, it's your language. This is a family show, remember? Who is the family too? Nostrovia. This is Chad Benson. Beginning on Friday, it will be the law here in L.A. that everybody working at or shopping at an essential business must be wearing a face covering. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. Cloth face coverings over their noses and mouths while at work. It will apply to anybody in a grocery store, drugstore, restaurant, hotel, taxi, ride share, construction site, and any other essential business. You know, what's funny is the World Health Organization just came out and said, if you're healthy, you don't have to wear a face mask. <laughs> well, which is it? Because you got, I don't, I'm so confused. Do I or don't I? What if I wear just a mask? What if I'm like, you know what, I'm going to wear a hockey mask or a goalie mask? What if I wear Jason Michael Myers? What if I put on my Michael Myers mask? Does that count as a mask? Well, no, it's got to be a face. Well, what's it got to be? Do I have to wear a beekeeper outfit? How's that work? We're all curious here. We're just trying to figure it all out. That's it. Just figuring it all out. What does that look like? I have to wear a mask. Can't go into a bank. Yeah, everybody's doing it, so thought I'd do it. You have to wear a mask to go in the store. Like, the face covering, is there is there going to be, like, a rule? Is there going to be somebody checking? Like, is there going to be police? You don't have your mask on. I, I don't know. I wonder if we look back in 10 years and go, <laughs> wow, that was an overreaction. I, I'm not saying it will be. I'm not saying. I'm just saying I wonder if we do look back in 10 years and go, well, I don't know if we needed to do that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show your Twitter. So Trump and Biden spoke. Trump and we, we talked and stuff. Biden, it's just it's it's a bizarre situation that they even spoke on the phone, you know, and it would be like, look, you know, I just want, I'm here for, for the country. I know we've got our disagreements and, and you know, kind of thing. But it was just the whole thing was weird. Now Biden's talking about what they spoke about. Asked whether or not we would not discuss the detail of what we talked about. Just say that we had a good conversation. He was very gracious in his, in his conversation. And, uh, and so it was, uh, you know, the president, I had an opportunity to tell him what I would have done, what I thought, the lessons we learned. I brought him, offered him a 10-point plan. I call it the make work checklist. <laughs> right? Come on. Even if you like Biden, you got to be going sweet. Uh, we, we, we're not going to talk about it, but here, let me tell you everything that happened on the phone. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, sitting down in front of my television and kneeling down in front of my television on, on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Joe, that's, uh, that's the hamper. <laughs> so weird. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Uh, by the way, the the Prime Minister of New Zealand. Here's something that's great. We we need stories that are positive and real. And I touched a bit on it yesterday. But uh, Janice Ardin, who is the Prime Minister, and she rose really to world prominence last year with the horrific shooting at the mosque uh, in New Zealand. She held a press conference the other day and was talking about essential workers. And one of the things that she did that I thought was so cool were kids were asking about what the Easter bunny and the tooth fairy. And they've been asking about things like that. She assured everybody that these creatures, these, these beings are untouchable, that they are essential workers, that they will be out there doing their thing because this cannot harm them and that they're essential. And I thought, you know, that's the kind of stuff we need. We get so caught up in 
all of this craziness. And it is crazy. Let's be real. We may ne- I may I'm 49. I'm shooting for 100. In good health and then we'll take it year by year from there. We may never live through anything like this again cuz I've been in through this with anything before. So this is something totally different. But we need to keep our eye on the prize of getting out of this but also do it with a smile on our face, as frustrating as it is. And I continue to say this. You wake up and you can either say, you know what? I'm going to choose to be happy. I'm going to find the lighter side of stuff. I'm going to stay away from crazy social media. I'm going to be as positive as possible. I'm going to try to better myself. I'm going to try to do some things while I'm in this position. I'm going to hustle and do what I have to do and make the most of it. Or we can be miserable. We can bitch, whine, and moan. I choose to be the person who's positive and looking forward. It's easy for you to say you got your job. Yeah, you know what? I'm blessed that I have my job. I worked hard. I sacrificed for years to get to this point. And I have friends out there who are suffering as well. And I can do everything I can to be positive and help everybody as much as I possibly can, which is what we should all be doing. But I know one thing. As growing up, even as into my adulthood, bitching, whining, and moaning never changed the situation. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Be positive what we can do right we get through this let's be positive stuff still going on many of you still going to work getting a lot of texts to people are still going to work many of you working from home think about that think about 20 years ago 30 years ago if something like this hit technology wasn't there in the way that it is now so less people would be working at all how much longer it would take to get a vaccine and treatments But because of technology, those things have advanced. And for many people, you're still able to work at home. You're still able to do some things. It's coming. That technology side is coming. And it's coming fast with the medical side. It's going to be able to help us get through this thing in a much quicker period of time than we normally would. We're also looking very carefully at rolling out and hopefully having soon, within the next 10 or 14 days, an antibody test so we can really tell how many Americans were asymptomatic and infected. And that's important. Fauci saying, you know, it could be 50% of people that have this showed zero signs, had built up antibodies, but for a while they were carriers of this, that they did have it. Which, by the way, if you look at the modeling, we'd be at 700,000 if that was true, almost 800,000. And the deaths at 12, that makes that modeling look different. That, that you know, 2% drops down dramatically, the mortality side. And we don't even know. We'll never know. That's the other thing. Models will change because human beings are a part of it. And we are able to change. And because we're able to change, we're able to do the things that we need to do to mitigate some of this and change our behavior, whether we like it or not, it changes the models. So could there have been 800,000 people nationwide that are affected? Yeah, it could be 5 million people that have gotten this. And we'll find out later on down the line that it wasn't 50%. It was 95% of people were asymptomatic. We don't know. What we do know is we're trying to get a handle on it. And they said there's four things that you need to look for when it comes to reopening. Hospitals and states across the country must be able to safely treat patients requiring hospitalization without resorting to crisis standard of care. And that's for everybody. 
COVID-19 or not, which some hospitals, it's bizarre in some states what they're telling, hey, paramedics, uh, somebody's got chest pains and they're sick and and they potentially become, have a cardiac situation. You, you, you just can't do it. And you're just like, hold on a second. And you, that, that, you're saying what? Every day we lose 1,700 people to chronic heart disease, about 1,600 people to cancer. So that puts in perspective when you look at yesterday was our worst day and we were, what, near 750 in, in New York? So that's something to think about. The second thing is states need to be able to test at least everyone who has symptoms. A lot of states aren't testing the way they should be. And that's a federal problem, big time, as well as a state's problem. Third thing, states need to be able to conduct monitoring of confirmed cases and contacts. So you get it. You've got to isolate. We need to know who all the people you've come in contact with in the last X amount of days. And the last thing is there must be a sustained reduction in cases for at least 14 days. So a decline. So if we have a 1,000 cases in the state, the next day we have 900 cases. Next day we have 800 cases and 750. New cases are going away, uh, down, down, down. That's what they're looking for. And some states are on their way. And some states are going to have a a tougher time climbing out of this. It's not going to be tomorrow, but it will happen. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Feel free to tweet at us. Fauci, you know, he, 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 Dr. Fauci is in a, in a weird position. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy. And, you know, he's a data guy, right? It's, it's numbers. It's science. They're usually the empathy side isn't always there. And you have to, when you're in a position of a, something like this especially, and people are turning to you, you have to understand that you're delivering news to people. And while you're looking at data and science, most people aren't built that way. Most people, they, they, they need a comfort shoulder. They want to know that things are going to get better. And sometimes just delivering something as it's a matter of fact, it's a tough thing. That by the time we get to the fall, we will have this under control enough that it certainly will not be the way it is now where people are shutting schools. My optimistic side tells me that we'll be able to renew to a certain extent, but it's going to be different. Remember now, because this is not going to disappear. By that time, we'll have a better feel with the antibody test about what the actual penetrance of this infection was in society. Yeah. Which is good. And he's, I think he's learning because some days it's very much like everything's going to hell in a handbasket and he's totally fine with that because it's numbers. And I don't think he's fine with it. It's just, you there's certain ways you talk, right? Whether you like Trump or not, there are certain things he, he does that you're like, okay, you know, shows his fighting ability, which we kind of like. He's a bit of a cowboy. We know that. To me, that that's interesting. And the way that he can resonate with a large group of people, you've got to be able to have that. You know, yesterday I was talking to somebody, I juxtaposed the position of, of what Obama would be like in this situation, Trump, right? Obama and Trump. Obama is, is, is pragmatic, right? And he would have been thoughtful. He would have showed empathy. He would have shut things down immediately across the boards for all states. He wouldn't have got the blowback that Trump got, but he would have he would have analyzed everything before he shut it down. But when he shut it down, it would have been a blanket shutdown. So it might have been longer before he shut down China and the travel there and that stuff. But once he did, it wouldn't have been states. You guys are doing this. He would have just said, "We're all doing this." And the media would have said, "Okay." And then what would have happened with somebody like Obama? is he'd have come out and he would have given his speeches. He would have listened to the science. They would have analyzed everything over and over. And some of the problems with the, the, a lot of blowback that he got as president, it was paralysis by analysis. The, the way that we're testing now, the way that we're throwing things against the wall to see what sticks, it was he, he would have, it would have been one of those situations where he would have overanalyzed everything in a lot of ways. And rather than sometimes you do need to go, you get the exact opposite with this guy, right? This guy's like, shut this down. Everybody, you guys do what your own. We're doing all these kind of things and we're trying here. And he's more Anthony Robbins. 
right? One's more, and the other guy's Deepak Chopra or Gandhi, right? Like it's it's the way he delivers his 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 thoughtful, and you know Trump's like we're gonna try everything. <laughs> Everybody go to the pharmacy, just take all the medicine you can, and then you get back to me in a week or so and you tell me which one it worked, and we'll just go with that one. You're like I took baby gum. He's like, all right, that sounds good. It's great. Could be a game changer. Flintstone vitamins could be a game changer. But we need a bit of both. We do. We need a bit of balance. Because you can't always analyze things till it gets to the point where you've got 25 different ways you've looked at it. And you decide, rather than catch any of the balls I've thrown in the air, I'll just let them all fall. And the other one, you just throw everything in the air at once. <laughs> and whichever one you catch, we're going to go with. Somewhere in the middle is good. I have been very hard on President Trump in the way that he's handled some of this stuff. And I think he's done a much better job. And at the same time, it gets frustrating. But every once in a while, we do need a little bit more analysis. And every once in a while, we do need a little bit more gut. I think Trump really wants to reopen the place and get people back to work because I think that's stuff he cares about. And I think he re- I think has a better understanding than some people out there in the political world that, that it's not just about whether or not you're in a paycheck. There's a lot that goes with that. And I think Trump understands that. I think we'll come out of this thing in a different way than we would under Obama. Doesn't mean one's right or wrong. It's just a different way. Trump, everybody go to the pharmacy. Just get whatever you can. Let's all take it. We'll all get back here tomorrow. We'll find out who doesn't feel good, and then we'll eliminate that. (laughs) Gummies, Flintstone vitamins look like they could be amazing. It's a game changer. Super game changer. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Ellen's in trouble, and she shouldn't be. I'm going to say this right now. Here's the thing about comics. And Jesselneck is the king of this. In tragedy, in times of chaos and darkness, most comics, they have a dark sense of humor. Even ones that are the shining lights of everybody's awe, they have some dark sense of humor. Because most comics have lived the life of darkness and tragedy, and they've used humor to overcome all that stuff. So they do find things weird. But we also live in a world now where you're going to get checked for everything you say. Even if it's just something kind of funny, haha, that should be just, hey, that joke was pretty just kind of vanilla. No, no, no. You're going to get checked. Ellen DeGeneres' daytime talk show has been off the air for most of the coronavirus shutdown, returning Monday from her living room. She thanked medical workers and those on the front lines, then made a joke that rubbed people the wrong way. This is like being in jail, is what it is. It's uh, mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days and everyone in here is gay. (laughs) The jokes that I have. On social media, Ellen was trending for the wrong reasons, slammed for being tone deaf, many pointing out that she was sitting in her comfy mansion while people in actual jails are getting coronavirus and dying. Oh, shut up. Get over yourself, for God's sakes. Were they put in jail because of the coronavirus? Were they put in jail... And it's it's horrible. We got to do a better job in the prisons. I mean, talk about a petri dish of stuff. Right? But get over yourself. Comedy is and especially with tragedy. Time plus tragedy equals comedy. Comics will tell you that. They will. Jesselneck, if you've never seen him, is a guy who lives in the dark humor world. And it's a delivery that's very interesting. He even says now, I don't even have to look at the news anymore. I start to get text messages from people saying, dude, don't do it. (laughs) Then I know something happened. Comics will look for the dark side because it's a great way for them to use their comedy to ease their fears. But we've got to stop being so butthurt about everything. Well, she's inside of her mansion. I have news for you. If the coronavirus wasn't here and she was on break for a month, she'd still be inside her mansion. Just letting you know. And she worked hard for that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. 
Wounded Paw Project. Been working with them for a while. They're amazing. You know, when he started this, Ernesto, he, he adopted a dog, Daisy. He was injured. He struggled with PTSD. He came home from his tours, and he adopted a dog. It says changed his life, and that's when he put Wounded Paw Project together. He realized that this animal can change his life. Imagine if they actually had dogs that they rescued and take them from shelter dogs to true service dogs, what it could do for veterans. But he also increased that to first responders from their family. And I'm telling you guys right now, the work that Wounded Paw Project is doing is great. And they're inundated right now because our first responders are really struggling. And just what a a real service dog can do and how it can brighten up and help people as they go through this is amazing. They need your help. You can take Action Day and turn your extra car, truck, RV, even a boat to a vehicle for change. You can donate. You can also donate cash. And you can even go to smile.amazon.com and set up your supporting group to Wounded Paw Project and help out in that way. Great tax-deductible gift. Proceeds will be used to protect, advocate, transform shelter dogs into service dogs for veterans, first responders, and their family. Check out all the work they do at WoundedPawProject.org. That's WoundedPawProject.org. Or call 844-678-4PAW, 844-678-4729, or WoundedPawProject.org. Chad Benson Show. Take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. What a day, right? Like all the craziness and chaos. And for those of you who don't know, big news. Bernie Sanders is suspending his campaign. He has sent an address to his supporters saying that he will have an all-staff conference call. He's announced that he's suspending his campaign for president. Yeah, he did that. He had his big conference call, said uh, social justice, want to thank everybody, blah, 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 blah. And suspended it, blah, 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 blah. People are mad at him. Mad for what? Look, this is my shock face. You weren't going to win. The path was done. I didn't know what you were hoping was going to happen. And then with all of that being, you know, said just just the normal day to day without all the coronavirus stuff, your path was very like Biden gets hit by a bus like that was kind of your path. Sounds horrible. But there you go. Now, with the coronavirus, you had no chance. So this is our shock face. You could you, you tried to push your message, your agenda. I think a lot of what you started seeing going on, too, is. Some of the stuff that you have that you want to do in play isn't all that it's supposed to be. And I think people are realizing that. And I think, you know, now maybe you're going to go out and, you know, push for your Green New Deal and your social agenda and yada, yada, yada. And look at the things we did. Good. We're moving on. Other things going on. Not our shock face because there was none. It was just one of those days you decided to do it today. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me and text the pro, uh, program as well. So now we know it's Biden and Trump. We always knew it, but now it's kind of like official. It's like when they know when the fight is coming, Biden v. Trump will take place. Will it be in the middle of a pandemic? Oh, the Lord, the humanity. That's going to be interesting. That will be interesting. And with Biden and his 10-point plan that he tried to give to Trump, is that Trump going to use that? I don't think so. They spoke on the phone. I got a 10-point plan. Here it is. I don't want this to get out of our conversations. Keep it between us. Now, if you don't mind, I have to go tell everybody what we talked about. 323-538-2423. Wireless earbuds are important, especially in this day and age. You're sitting at home. It's never been more important, right? You're Zooming, you're trying to talk to people, you got conference calls, your kids are running around, the neighbors are home, they're playing video games, it's loud, you're going, ah! That's why you need Raycons. Half the price of all those other earbuds out there, way better. Six hours of playtime with the new E25. Seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, compact design, and a nice noise-isolating fit. So whether you're doing your conference calls, video chats, or maybe just binging on podcasts, these things are there for you. And you are going to love, 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 love them. 
On top of the fact they're well under 100 bucks, how about this? 15% off right now. It's simple and easy. You go to buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Say 15% best earbuds around the Raycons E25s. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Chadshow.com. You can check us out there. Find out where we're playing in your neck of the woods and your podcast, the whole nine yards. If you missed any of the show, plus we got the Facebook, the Instagram, and even TikTok now, although I've not ticked and or talked. Have a great rest of your day. Smile, laugh, be happy. We'll do it again tomorrow. Got you over the hump. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.